welcome to Friendship and Joy with Karen and Suzanne. I'm Karen. And I'm Suzanne. And today we're going to talk about something that Suzanne thinks is boring. Yes. But it's important. We need to talk about this. And that is posture. The reason I think it's boring is that I've had... I shouldn't really... I guess I'm in denial about my back. I've had a sore back off and on for a very long time. And... Uh, yes, we need to know absolutely because you only have one back and yeah. it's important and when you do sit for long periods of time just by um, Shifting something here and there it can yeah. make all the difference Absolutely, and when it comes to knitting I think especially if you are a beginner knitter It is so easy to be a little stiff in your hands and arms and whatnot because you're concentrating so hard and then what happens you're shoulders go up and your elbows come out and you sit like this <laughs> well i'm exaggerating now but does it doesn't take long tension. it yeah. does not take long to get sore shoulders and sore back sore back if you knit like that so tip number one always tuck your elbows to your side like keep them down seriously and keep your fingers loose you can knit for a very long time by just sitting like this um, this, not so good. This, not so good. This, you can go and go and go and go. Nice and loose and easy. Yeah, I know myself, it's easy to, especially if you've had a very busy day yeah. uh, and you have a lot of stress in your life, yeah. it doesn't take much for your shoulders to be tense and mm -hmm. you have a tendency to pull them upwards. Mm -hmm. So just make a conscious decision. Suzanne, you actually, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but you taught me something years ago when you got me back into knitting. We can talk about that another time because that's a funny story. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I asked you because you often did this. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. You were like moving your neck around. And I said, why are you doing that? Because that way my neck doesn't get stiff. You I said, said that? Yeah. Sometimes, so often, I actually I do a little figure eight. It, sometimes I remember to move my head a little bit because it doesn't. Are you that, sure I said that? Yeah, sometimes. we were sitting not at the. Yeah, we were. Sitting, really? Of course. Oh my god. So it is actually very good to move around a little bit to not be so stagnant because the looser you are, the longer you can knit without getting stiff and sore. So that's very important. Another thing. Not that I do it very often, but if if I start a new pattern that I find tricky or if I start a new technique, let's say color work, you knit with two hands and you're doing something different, it is very easy to be, again, too tight with your fingers. So to warm up your fingers before you start to knit, especially if you're going to sit for a long time, it is helpful. And then do some stretches. Mm. You do this, you, you grab your fingers and you push back to stretch and to do this, to stretch your arms to do it. Very important. That's a good to go. Idea. Yeah, that's a and great idea. Keep it going. <laughs> it's easy. Once you know how, you what can go for hours. What other suggestions have I made that... <laughs> not to look uh, like an I guess, idiot. I guess not, not to look like an idiot. <laughs> I was... I had very poor posture. <laughs> When we started, I had poor posture oh big time because God. I wasn't sure. No. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So part of the things that we like to do, and I know Karen is very passionate about knitting, is just to get other people into it because mm -hmm. there is a myth that it's so complicated and it's so hard. It doesn't have to be. It's mm -hmm. not that complicated. It's not. And most of the time, the people that I've taught, the first thing they say, oh my God, it's not that hard. It's not that easy. I mean, it's not... <laughs> I thought it was so much more complicated yeah. when it's not. And um, so I, I guess we should begin to say that both Suzanne and I are continental style knitters. There's different ways of knitting. You have, uh, you can either be a, a when, where continental style is where you hold the yarn in your left hand and you basically pick up the yarn with your needle and to slide and then slide it off in one sort of fluid motion. We're there, going to show you closer up later on how, how to actually do that if you'd like that. It's, for us, that is how we were taught and that is super easy and is a pretty 
once you become used to it, it's a pretty fast way of knitting. Much faster. Okay. What's that, happening? Yeah, I mean, I messed up, like always. And here's the point. When you get together and you talk to friends and you knit something and you have to count, you always mess up. So I have two projects. I always have my, my interesting project that I want to do. And then I have a very simple project that I use when I get together with a knitting group. And obviously I should have brought that one today because I messed up. So I have to now frog. I have to frog it. Uh, or I just unknit. That's something I like to do. I unknit. It's easier. I can actually teach you how to unknit. If you learn how to unknit, I've got, then you, you can go back pretty okay. quick. So to demonstrate how to unknit, Let's say I had made a mistake down here and I need to go back on my needle to um, get to where my mistake is so I can fix it. I um, hold the yarn again uh, with a little bit of tension here on my index finger. And then I go in with the left needle into the hole that you see underneath the stitch here. You stick your needle in through that and you slide the stitch off the needle and pull the yarn through. And that way you can undo what you have done. Quick. So what do you suggest then? So if you go in, if you're if you have a heavy duty project, don't bring it to your friend's house. Exactly. Have two. I, it, so when you come and knit, and, and walk, knit along with us, it, it might be easier if you do something simple that is not too complicated because now I have to sit here and unknit this whole row. I just realized I messed up. So it's, um, yeah, one easy and one complicated. It's good to have. Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. How many? Yeah, I remember we've gone to our knitting group and then we're sitting there and everyone's talking and I realize, oh no, not this pattern. I won't be able to knit all night. No, exactly. So I, I, I always make sure I have something super simple to do so I can sit and just not think about it. Did you know, or I don't know if we have time for this right now, but I made a little song. Because when you frog, in, in the knitting world, you call frogging it when you rip it. You rip it, rip it, rip it. Um, and it's so frustrating, it's so depressing, and I try to avoid frogging if I can. But when I do have to frog something that I've started, I cheer myself up by singing a little song that okay, I made. Let's, let's hear it. It's so silly. Let's hear it. Rip it, rip it, rip it, like a little frog. When you're done, you will find that you eased your mind. Rip it, rip it, rip it, like a little frog. When you're done, you will see, now you're finally free to knit. Yay. And you're staying positive <laughs> yeah. instead of swearing and cursing. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> Friendship and joy on that yes. one. <laughs> okay. Until next Until time. Next time. Bye. Bye. Ready? Yes. Uh, hold on. Okay. month old puppy. He's so cute. Yeah, he's such a good boy. He loves to run around with my balsa wool. So unfortunately I have to put my wool aside or it, Pablo likes to play around with it and make all the yarn unravel all over the house. Fun. <laughs>